Next at 6, a deadly industrial accident in the triad. A worker was killed at a renovation site. Plus, South Carolina state senators approve removing that Confederate flag from Capitol grounds. But tonight, the future of that flag is uncertain. And new charges against the man accused of killing nine people at church in Charleston. How it stems from people who survived that attack. All right, this breaking right now, this in Winston-Salem. A worker is dead following an industrial accident. This accident was reported around 340 on Vine Street. Our Kristen Drummond is live at that scene with the latest for us. Kristen. Hey, Sharon. Well, as you can see right now, first responders are still out here on the scene taking a look at what happened this afternoon. As you said, around 340 just behind me, a little bit of ways off. You can see the investigators are right now at the scene where a worker, I am told, had an accident when he was operating a cherry picker at the 60 building. Now, this is the building that was formerly owned by RJ's Reynolds Tobacco Facility. It was one of their complexes and is now being transformed into a medical education facility. And with me right now is Eric Tomlinson, with the, who is president for the Wake Forest Innovation Quarter. And Eric, can you tell me, do, what, what do you know, what happened earlier today? What do we know about the worker? Well, it's a very tragic incident, of course, has occurred here today. We do know that it is a worker's deceased. He was a subcontractor working on the uh, 60s building, which is now owned by Wexford Science and Technology, and has been transformed into the medical education building. Apart from that, there's little we know, but of course our heart and condolences go out to uh, the family of the deceased, as well as the, uh, the, his co-workers who many of them witnessed the, the incident. The site was secured after the incident and the, uh, the workers uh, departed uh, from the site. A number of other people work here, of course, who also witnessed the incident and uh, our hearts go out to them as well. Do we know what the worker was working on? Because I know there are train tracks that go right over that area. No, they, they are those, uh, those are walkways between the buildings. Our understanding is the worker was not actually working on those uh, walk King paths and so the actual details of the instance we have no uh, no knowledge at this stage so uh, going forward do we know what's going to happen in regards to construction safety to make sure another accident like this doesn't happen well of course safety is paramount in all of our activities here and uh, the construction company uh, Whiting Turner has an impeccable record uh, where safety is of, of paramount importance to them so they and we will be doing an investigation together with uh, OSHA and uh, also the other uh, regulatory bodies. All right. Well, thank you. We appreciate you taking the time to Very speak sad. with us. Sharon, reporting in Winston-Salem. Kristen Drummond, Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. All right, Kristen, thank you for that update. Uh, the South Carolina State Senate votes to remove the Confederate battle flag from State House grounds in Columbia. Now the issue is up to the State House of Representatives. There is growing momentum to remove that flag from government-owned property following the Charleston Church shooting. Sean Flynn takes a look at the latest step in taking down the Stars and Bars. Mr. Turner. After hours of debate Monday, it only took a few minutes for the South Carolina State Senate to vote for a final time overwhelmingly approving a motion to remove the Confederate battle flag from the Capitol grounds. Sean Flynn, Time Warner Cable News. If the State House votes to remove the flag tomorrow, they will need to come back Thursday to take one last vote. Charleston Church shooting suspect Dylan Roof is facing new charges in addition to the nine counts of murder. A prosecutor says he's been indicted on three new attempted murder charges stemming from people who survived that June 17th shooting at Emanuel AME Church. Roof also faces a weapons charge. Federal authorities have not said if they will pursue hate crime charges against him. Cleanup crew spent this afternoon removing graffiti from the Silent Sam statue at UNC Chapel Hill. Over the weekend, someone sprayed Black Lives Matter and murderer on the Confederate Memorial. This memorial is a tribute to students who fought in the Civil War. Over in Durham County, deputies want to know who spray painted a similar message on the Confederate statue outside the old county courthouse. You can still kind of see where the paint was washed off there. The two incidents follow one from last week. Someone sprayed a similar message on a Confederate monument at the Maplewood Cemetery in Durham. We talked with one NCCU professor who says this is not the way to spread a message. And we're talking about having a conversation rather that is about uh, how do we come to a healthy disagreement and start to make things happen. This, what we saw happen today, this is not the answer. 
UNC Chapel Hill and Durham investigators have not said if they believe all three incidents are connected. Federal officials say an F-16 fighter jet collided midair with a small plane in South Carolina this morning and it killed two people. The FAA says the fighter jet collided with a Cessna C-150 around 11, about 11 miles north of Charleston. The impact killed both passengers inside the Cessna. However, an Air Force spokeswoman says the pilot of the F-16 was able to eject himself safely. The F-16 originated from Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. The names of those involved have not been released. We have an update now to a story we brought you last night out of York County, South Carolina. The sheriff's office says four people found dead in Rock Hill over the weekend died in a murder-suicide. Deputies believe Randy Moore shot and killed his wife, son, and his son's girlfriend before turning the gun on himself. Two of the victims were found inside the home. The other two were found outside. Moore's wife, Anna, was an assistant county manager in York County. In a statement, the sheriff's office said, we want to make sure we investigate this case thoroughly with the hope to understand how and why this tragedy took place. Investigators are still waiting on forensic evidence from the crime lab. Subway is suspending their relationship with spokesman Jared Fogel, while FBI and Indiana State Police have him under investigation. Both agencies raided his home this morning, removing a number of electronics. The FBI only confirms at this time they're conducting an investigation. They would not confirm if it involved Fogel. Local media is reporting that he was detained while electronics were removed from the home and analyzed inside a mobile forensics van. Fogel became the restaurant's pitchman after losing more than 200 pounds while eating Subway sandwiches and exercising. The FBI is working to identify more victims of an online sexual predator who targeted teens because he said adult women were, quote, too smart to fall for his scheme. 31-year-old Lucas Chancellor is now serving 105 years in federal prison, but investigators say these are some of the most common scream names he used. Court documents say he blackmailed hundreds of girls across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. into giving him sexually explicit photos and videos. Now they're hoping more of those teens will come forward. So if any of those names on the screen look familiar to you, you can search sexploitation at twcnews.com to find out more about what you should do next. Stokes County residents could soon see improvements to their waterways thanks to some projects in the works funded by Duke Energy Settlement with the government. Our Meg Smith is live in our Triad newsroom to explain. Meg. That's right, Sharon. I had the privilege of spending the day with a Stokes County business owner whose livelihood depends on the Dan River. And he tells me he's hopeful that the county will see some of that settlement money. David Hoskins owns the Dan River Company, renting out canoes and kayaks to eager paddlers. While coal ash never made it to the Stokes County portion of the river. We're 50 to 70 miles upstream in Stokes County and the, the ash doesn't have a physical effect, only a psychological effect. And a spokesman for Duke Energy tells me that Stokes County, along with other areas along the river and through across the state where they were affected by the coal ash spill, are eligible for $10 million in grant money through the Water Resources Fund. We're live in the Triad Newsroom. Meg Smith for Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. A bill is working its way through the General Assembly to decide whether or not the State Department of Labor needs to study zip lines across North Carolina to decide if they need to be regulated. Just ahead, I'll have more details. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. North Carolina doesn't regulate the use of zip lines. Instead, each county is left to decide what makes them safe and what doesn't. Well, after the death of a young girl last month, some lawmakers are pushing for one standard. Arlene O'Connell explains this proposal. Percy Valley Attractions was the first amusement park in Guilford County to open a zip line course. So about a year process of gathering what the standards were in this industry and then showing Guilford County how I was going to exceed them and put that in writing and then they allowed me to get a permit. In North Carolina, zip lines fall under county, not state guidelines. In Guilford County, Elena O'Connell, Time Warner Cable News. The new legislation has been passed in the Senate. The House will hear it next week. If it passes, the study must be completed by February 2016.
It was early Monday morning that Austin Dillon was thrust into the conversation of NASCAR safety. Dillon's car launching into the catch fence at Daytona during the Coke 0400. Now, Dillon walked away from this wreck with a bruised forearm and tailbone on Tuesday. He told a teleconference that he still feels soreness in his injuries as well as in his shoulders. Dillon saying he was tensed up before the impact to better withstand the hit. As for making racing safer, Dillon says he would like to be involved in the process of trying to make things better. I think we can do things to, to help, um, you know, slow down some of the wrecks and might keep us from, from catching air, but we'll just have to see the direction the NASCAR goes and maybe they'll, you know, ask the drivers their opinions and um, we can give them, you know, a good opinion to, to kind of go together to make the race and still stay the same. I feel like we can create the racing because if, up until that wreck, I mean, we had some really good racing um, Monday morning. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, the wreck kind of tarnished a, a great race. Plenty of ACC news coming up at 11 o'clock. I'm Mike Solarte. That's your look at sports at 6. Well, we have another hot stretch of weather setting up for the Carolinas. We got details coming up in your Weather on the Ones. All right, 622, temperatures still hovering in the mid-upper 80s at the sour. Dew points are high. That means the humidity is making it feel still like 90. Last hour, we were sitting in that 92 degree range here for that feel like temperature. And although it wasn't a sizzler today with a high of only 90, it uh, has been feeling much hotter than that uh, mid to upper 90s throughout parts of the area here. Thanks to all that humidity now currently 88 to 89. I should say there in uh, Winston Salem and Reedsville 88 in Burlington Chapel Hill 88 Lexington 87 right now Ashboro 91 down in Albemarle. And again when you factor in the humidity right at 90 here for Winston Salem and Greensboro 92 Wednesday 94 Thursday 91 Friday low 90 Saturday and Sunday. I do think storm chances will be back on the increase for the weekend and yeah, all the way through early next week here. We're talking low to mid 90s. So today kind of setting off a streak of 90s that well, at least for the time being Sharon, we think will last at least the next seven days back to you. OK, we'll be ready. Thank you, Monty. Now here's tonight's Carolina Minute. The Coast Guard rescued a 77 year old woman from a cruise ship near Wilmington. The guard received a call from the Carnival Pride cruise ship for a female passenger suffering stroke-like symptoms. The woman was taken to a hospital in Greenville where she's listed in stable condition. While most students are still enjoying summer vacation, it was back to class today for some Wake County students enrolled in year-round schools. However, the structure of the classroom remains uncertain. State lawmakers are working to iron out a comprehensive budget plan. The Senate's plan cuts hundreds of teaching assistants. More places to shop and dine could be coming to the Warehouse District in downtown Raleigh. City Council heard plans for the retail and residential space during its meeting today. People who live in the area expressed concerns about noise. Council will take a look at the issue later this month. These stories and more are available anytime on Time Warner Cable News. Well, job openings rise in May. Let's get the latest on the economy now from our team on Wall Street. I'm Diane King Hall from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. After spending the better part of the session in the red, a reversal of fortune mark trading on Wall Street thanks to some recovery in the oil pits by the close of Dow Industrials gained 93 points after being down as much as 217. The Nasdaq added five. The S&P 500 rose 12. From the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Tonight on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, another hearing is scheduled for the Charlotte Mecklenburg County police officer charged with voluntary manslaughter, what the latest motions filed are and why some aren't happy with them. That is our time here at 6 o'clock. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next. Hope to see you back here at 11 on ABC 45.